How do you make a distinction between controlled and uncontrolled hypertension? The simple answer to this is your physicians or the documentation that you're reviewing should clearly indicate whether the patient's hypertension is controlled or uncontrolled. Typically we assume and we're taught to assume from a coding perspective that the hypertension is controlled unless the provider says something to indicate otherwise. Just like when we talk about other topics like fractures, right? We assume that it's a closed fracture unless they say it's an open fracture. Well, with hypertension, we assume that it is controlled unless they give us some sort of indication to say, this is not controlled. Um, and that could be lots of different things. They could be changing dosages. They could simply stay uncontrolled, not well controlled. That is a piece of documentation that we're frequently missing. And as we continue to do physician education, that's a big piece to push. Especially as we move to value-based payment uh, and away from the fee-for-service environment and more towards value-based, what you're going to find is from those value-based systems like a risk adjustment perspective, the, the carriers, when I say they, are going to expect that your provider has indicated whether the condition is stable, worsening, improving, well controlled, poorly controlled, out of control, those sorts of things. So that's a piece that you want to work with your physicians. If you have that ability to talk to your physicians, query your physicians, or educate your physicians, you want to encourage them to be documenting and giving you the specifics. What I did want to say, however, is the CDC, the Center for Disease Controls and Prevention, they did an analysis, they did this survey to see what is typically considered uncontrolled. And they defined uncontrolled hypertension as an average systolic blood pressure greater than or equal to 140 milligrams of mercury or an average diastolic blood, pr blood pressure greater than or equal to 90 milligrams of mercury among those patients who have hypertension. Am I saying that if you have this clearly documented, you can automatically assume the patient has uncontrolled uh, hypertension? Absolutely not. What I'm saying is if you see documentation showing that that patient's SBP is above 140 or their DBP is above 90, that's when you need to be asking the question of your providers. You know, Doc, it sure looks like this patient may have uncontrolled hypertension, but you need the provider to make the diagnostic statement. I've included a link below where I actually found this information. It was public domain. It's on the CDC website. It's a link to the CDC website. But what you're going to find is that just like other diseases like diabetes, the definition of hypertension has changed over the years. And this is just the newest um, criteria that they're using, if you will. For example, with diabetes, right? We used to be told we wanted our blood sugars under what, 120, and now they're saying under 100. Things change over time the more studies that they do. This is the most current one I was able to find. But this gives us a basis, a jumping off point to start the conversations with the physicians and educate ourselves as billers and coders to know when to start asking the questions of our physicians. So your takeaway here, how do you tell the difference between controlled hypertension and uncontrolled hypertension? Hopefully the documentation is going to be there, but if it's not and you're looking to use uncontrolled hypertension, you've got to have that, cl that clinical statement from the physician and you're going to be looking at what's the patient's blood pressure running? What indicators in the documentation are telling you it may not be well controlled? If a patient's got a blood pressure above 140 over 90 and they're on medication, chances are the doctor's going to say, hmm, this doesn't look like the medication's working well or they may be adjusting the dose. They're going to give you other triggers in their documentation to cause you to ask them questions or hopefully to cause you to think about asking them questions, right, to trigger that. So that's the clear cut as I could make it. It really needs to be in the documentation, but if it's not, here's when you know to start asking questions.